Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. Uh, can we please review some military toys? You know what? Okay, Jess, I'm sure we can find something that's military themed. One sec. Jose can Seiko? Nah. Uh. Ah, there it is. All right, Jess, I have just the thing. Oh, yeah? It's one of the oldest lines still going. Okay. And they've been producing three and three quarter inch figures for almost 40 years. Wow, but I thought you weren't going to review G.I. Joe. Well, I'm not. Huh? This week, it's... The Core! Oh, come on! By Lenard! <laughs> Did somebody say Lenard? Oh, my God. Ha, ha, ha. Served you right. My name is Malt McFogg, and I'm the foremost expert on everything Lenard, especially the core. Wait, 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 I know who you are. What are you doing back here? I have been working tirelessly behind the scenes from my secret lair. It's not your secret lair. It's my goddamn basement, and you haven't worked a day in your life. I have too. She's been down down there. Your mother and I are trying to sleep. Jackass! I am keeping it! I am keeping it down! So, what are you doing here? I'm here to make sure that you don't get anything wrong about the core! The core sucks! No, they don't! Get a job! Ha <laughs> ha! What a bum! <laughs> alright, alright! So it looks like you'll be along for the ride this week again, huh? That's right! Shut up! Ha <laughs> ha! It's the core by Lenard! Raz Holly, hit the music! people consider to be a golden age for movies, cartoons, pro wrestling, but especially toys. And one of the biggest toy lines of the 80s was Hasbro's juggernaut, G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And with anything popular, be it movies, TV shows, or toys, something successful will always breed, let's say, similar products. Or you can call them what they are, knockoffs. Now wait just a minute, are you trying to say that the core is a knockoff? Yep. But uh, but that, but that, what, what? Go ahead, tell me something the core did before G.I. Joe. Uh, oh wait, but that, but that, what, what? That's what I thought. <laughs> Obviously, something that big is going to have knockoffs. And G.I. Joe has had their fair share. <coughs> Migo. <coughs> One knockoff in particular stuck around for over 30 years. Lenard's flagship line, The Core. Originally called Gung Ho, Lenard had to change the name as Hasbro had first use. The core, despite its knockoff status, has been able to endure through a combination of value and cheap charm that no other knockoff Joe could pull off. And for over 30 years, the core has endured, building its own fan base with scalpers, I mean collectors, selling the figures online for prices that rival those of vintage figures they were knocking off. After meeting and becoming friends with Raz Holly, YouTube's authority on the core. He introduced me to the world of the core and subsequently Lenard. Over the years, I've picked up a few of the figures that I liked building a small collection. So let's check out some of the core by Lenard. 
Okay, so from 2017, it is the Core Elite. A brand new, new arrival, three packs available only at Walmart. Um, there is so much history and so many different figures and so much crap that they have made over the years that it was really hard to narrow it down to just one thing. I, uh, honestly, I didn't want this video to be too long. Um, I understand that it's, it's pretty much a long one, but let's take a look at what I chose here is that in 2017, they released some new figures with new articulation and released four three packs um one of uh well, as you can see here we have them the figures fully displayed we have our uh, our, our great uh, cover art on the uh on here the the graphic design it's a little busy it's a little busy but honestly these things are being sold at walmart on the toy aisle and uh for a bargain i believe these were five dollars a piece so for five dollars you're getting um a little vehicle here um in, in the other ones there's a little uh like a, a drone helicopter there's a motorcycle a couple motorcycles and uh and a missile launcher so pretty goddamn cool we got a, a butt ton of weapons um, that come with these guys some of them are actually wearable weapons um honestly on the surface this stuff looks pretty cool we all have uh, interesting little backstories and uh telling us about all the new characters for the core here on the front um you wouldn't know who the hell the other guys are I was gonna show you some vintage figures, but I don't really feel like doing that because again, this video does not need to be fucking seven and a half hours long. This ain't Scarface, motherfucker. This is this is the Dan Classic Show, and we need to look at some fucking action figures and get them out of the box. And right here is a dozen, a dozen fucking action figures. Is that enough for you? Is that enough? Well, okay. Is that not enough? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do you a fucking solid. I'm gonna do just like Leonard. I'm gonna recycle some old fucking footage from way back in 2017 and I'm going to add it right here uh, right here on this video uh, to, to kind of school you a little bit on uh, maybe on these characters maybe if you didn't know who they were um, you're going to get to see some more information so for 20 bucks though not too bad got 12 figures and, and four uh, vehicles or, or little props to use let's get these things out of the fucking box and see what they look like on the inside All right, so let's start with the figures that came with these that were previously released. Um, Lenard is like uh, the, the Native Americans, and they waste no part of the buffalo. They reuse figures over and over and over again um, to uh, to the point of, of nauseam um, with the consumer. But anyway, um, let's take a look. This is Rucker. Uh, he's the leader, or at least he was at one point the leader of the core um, in the uh, the canon. Of the of the core, if you give a shit, um, you know he, he's basically fucking Duke with uh, with black hair. Uh, he's he's brunette Duke. There he is with his, with his flat top and his square fucking jaw. Um, uh, one thing you will notice about the about the core figures, um, great fucking sculpts, uh, great fucking looking little details on there. Um, and the facial, uh, it's they're okay. Um, they they range from kind of okay to all right. Um, they're not too bad. Uh, there's really no huge problems necessarily um, until we turn the figure around, turn the figure around, turn the figure around, and realize that the fucking paint applications, fucking, they just didn't, they didn't paint them, and it's, this isn't like a fucking, you know, a mistake figure. This is every single one of them. Um, they they do these nice little details on the front, uh, the nice paint applications, um, and then you turn the figure around, and it was all a fucking facade. Uh, so once you open these up out of the box, it becomes a different story. They look like uh, you know high detail, um, you know, and then you know they say, well, you know, we sold them for like fucking basically two bucks a piece, uh, you know, dollar a piece. Um, well, I guess, um, but whatever. Um, that's Rucker, um, and we'll we'll get we'll get to him. We'll get to you later. Rucker. All right, and this is the pilot guy. His name's a uh, shitbird or something. Whatever. Who cares? Oh, and then we have here. What? What's this? This is the fucking craptastic four. Um, these are figures that Lenard has been selling for fucking years, years. Um, and like, look at this guy. This guy is fucking Raven or 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 fucking uh, the fucking smoke shot, whatever the fuck his name is. He's got two points of articulation, one good pose. Five. All right, here's here's fucking uh, fucking Rudy Tootie. Um, he's got his fucking guns here. Got two points of our three points of articulation. I'm sorry, my mistake. 
fucking oh and here he is fucking buckshot fucking fucking buckshot look at this piece of shit his, his mustache is crooked he's wearing these dumb orange glasses um the, you know the sculpt is okay on the body um nice little details on his little flight suit or whatever the fuck it is and uh and he comes with a little fucking uh in, in, in fucking goddamn 1800s pistol and again turn around no goddamn paint application fuck off all right and then here's raz's favorite guy um fucking dozer he looks like uh like it does look like shit um, yeah, look at, look at his face. Ah! Like, fuck, get, that, get the fuck out of here. All right, so. All right, opening these up, they come with all kinds of accessories and weapons and horse shit. Look at all this crap that they come with. Um, it's hard to figure out who to match to what, um, but we'll be taking a closer look at the figures here in a second. But let's first take a look at, oh, look at this. Hey, look at all the detail on the front. It's some just stickers. Just, you couldn't put a fucking couple stickers on the back of this thing. This thing's actually pretty cool though. Um, you can put it on the guy's fucking, uh, on the guy, on a guy's back. He holds on to the thing or whatever. Um, or you can fucking, he can and straddle this piece of shit. And there he goes. And you can fly. All right. And then, um, this thing, um, it, these wheels aren't real. It's a fake. Um, at least there, there's fucking paint applications on the back, but they're not really wheels. And there's not a full fucking you know, suite of paint applications. Thank God, goodness they painted some of the tire. Um, no, no paint there, no paint there. Um, we've got a couple of stickers that say the curse um, because, of course, they have to brand their uh, <laughs> their fucking their drone. Um, the wings clip out on this on this bad boy, and uh, you can launch the drone. Wee! Fuck out of here. Um, this is cool. It's a dirt bike it says uh, Rancor on the side. Uh, fucking fucking looking at another lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> from Lucasfilm there. Um, and then uh, you've got uh, Made in China. Look at this. But at least the wheels roll. Um, you know, uh, just give, give me, give us a couple extra goddamn stickers. Jesus. And then we have our more uh, modern speed bike. Striker, it says on the side there. It says Elite on the side. Because, you know, because of course the core has, has fucking speed bikes um, for, for racing purposes. Anyway, um, so it's hard to match up all these weapons, so you're always going to end up with a bunch of extra shit. So let's take a look at the figures that you would have bought this for. The figures that actually have the 18 points of articulation. And we'll start with, uh, with fucking this guy. What was his fucking name again? Shrapnel. Shrapnel is his fucking name. Um, he's... Yeah, he's really fucking cool looking. I don't really have a whole lot of bad things to say about the newer figures. They do have all the points of articulation you could want. Um, and they got like all these wearable weapons and stuff. You can take this rifle off and he can hold it in his hand. You can also hold it here on his back. They look great posed. They look great fucking, you know, standing on a desk just by themselves. You can stand them at attention. You can put them in a pose. You can make them look like they're just standing around talking to each other or shooting each other in the face. It's fucking great looking figures. Um, moving on to the, the next guy in line here. Um, this is Trick Shot, I believe. Um, or at least that's what it says on the back of the box. I'm led to believe that this is Trick Shot. He's got a little holster with a pistol there. Another, uh, like, M16 style fucking machine gun, assault rifle, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Look, I'm not a gun guy. What the fuck? Tell me, let me know in the comments. Whoa, what kind of, what kind of gun is this? Is this based on a real life gun? Are these based on real life fucking military things? Um, is this guy based on a real life fucking military, uh, uniform? I don't know. Fucking, all right, so there's Trick Shot. He's supposed to be a, um... Was he like a parkour guy? I think. Parkour. Ah, ah. If I remember correctly, from the old Raz Holly days, fucking uh, maybe where he's he's friends with the parkour guy. Yeah, parkour. Get off. Parkour. Get off. Okay. W whatever. He he looks like he's another guy that kind of looks a little bit like Duke. He has more realistic look to him. Uh, he looks more like a military guy. His hair is closer to a fucking regulation cut here. Um, not too bad, if not a little generic. Fucking, uh, next up is, is this guy. This guy's fucking mysterious. He's dope. He's got the fucking scarf covering his face. Um, and he's got his fucking, his, his elf ears sticking out the, the top here. <laughs> um, I used the color of the weapons. 
um, to, uh, to to match uh, the, the figures. I found that like, hey, if one of the colors is, is the same, that must be this guy's weapon. A uh, problem is with this rifle here on this gentleman. Let me find out what his fucking name is. Fucking Smoke. His name's Smoke. Um, I'll remember that because he has gray hair, so smoke, right? Um, problem is his his wearable weapon um, cannot be worn. But other than that, fucking really cool looking figure, mysterious. Uh, you know another cool thing about him? He's got fucking tennis shoes on. He's got fucking some some cool, sort of baggy pants um, and some tennis shoes. He looks like he looks cool. Like this is a figure that that you might you know kind of an update instead of doing some. You know, rip off GI Joe style stuff. Here's something that's that's original. Here's something that that you had use some creativity. He's got a fucking badass scar on his face. He's got a lot of high detail for being a figure that's only three and three quarter inches tall. Very fucking cool looking figure. I love the fucking new figures. I'm I'm not even gonna fucking lie, dude. I'm not gonna front like these are dog shit or anything. The like the old figures, the craptastic four, those th those figures suck. But these figures, fucking awesome. Next up is El Jefe. Here he is in his in his fucking look at his little little fucking alfalfa goddamn do here. Um, El Jefe. He's got some wearable weapons as well. Got a big ass fucking uh, crocodile Dundee knife and a, a holster, and you can pull that gun out and uh, a couple little extra paint applications. The one the one problem when you do these things where you have the the, the bulletproof vest, your your tactical vest, whatever. Um, and you have it the same color as your um, your dick piece, whatever. Um, it looks like he's wearing like a little onesie, like <laughs> over his BDU pants. It's like, shouldn't shouldn't this this be the same color? I don't know. Fucking, I, I'm not in the military. I don't know. Maybe this is what they wear. Oh, he's got brass knucks. Isn't that fucking cool? And you know what? And if you were want to do it, if you were a fucking you know customizer, you could come on here. And uh, you can you can really get into these details here, making uh, do a little chrome out on the fucking brass knucks on the knuckle dusters. There, um, you could paint the belt up and make them look all cool. You could really fucking do these up nice if you felt like it. They are kind of small, and for you know somebody that might be just getting started, it might be a little difficult to to really fucking uh, do those details. But maybe just a quick wash, like a black wash on these, would make the make them look really fucking cool. And here we are. Here's another fucking guy. Um, I couldn't find a good weapon for this guy. He should have a big ass honking cannon or some shit. The, the guns on this motherfucker. Um, this is Titan, I believe. Titan, if you will. Um, another thing I like about the core, um, if you do look into the, you know, the names and the and the backgrounds of the characters and shit, they have uh, there's a lot of international flair there. There's a lot of Latino guys. Uh, there's there's guys from other countries. It's fucking cool, man. I, I really like that. I like the emphasis on on it being more of an international thing as opposed to just a just a you know a bunch of American guys. And I believe. Um, I have heard tale that you can take off this mask and see what he looks like underneath. But uh, you know what? I like the air of mystery fucking on uh, on Titan here with his fucking mask. Dude, this guy's fucking dope looking. I love this figure. I, I love all these new figures. These are really fucking great. Finally, uh, the guy with the fucking, uh, like, the really cool look. He's got this awesome hood. And uh, fucking, dude, he looks like a like a ninja or, or some sort of fucking awesome special forces fucking secret guy um problem is uh fucking his name is impact uh. fucking good lord like fucking impacted molars impacted feces fucking come on man let's get a better fucking name for this guy dude we fucking name this come on lenard get this guy a better fucking name aside from that pretty fucking cool he's got his little holster hold his uh his pistol on his side and he comes with this fucking cattle prod thing that he holds uh, into these wearable weapons. I love the wearable weapons feature. Sometimes they fucking fall out of the holsters, but because they are so small, I do kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, at the end of the day, um, these new figures, and for the prices that they were selling them for at the time, they're a fucking great deal. 
Hey, so back in 2017, I had a, uh, here's the Craptastic Four. Back in 2017, uh, we took a special look at the Craptastic Four. Um, I used to do these things called five-star reviews. I explained it here in the quick video, and uh, we're going to take a look at a five-star review of the Craptastic Four. It seems like we had to wait an eternity for new core figures to come out. And when Lennard finally decided to grace us with these new figures, which are admittedly pretty fucking cool, they just had to go and add <clears throat> value to these new sets by including the four worst figures in the previous line. By now, everybody knows I'm talking about the Craptastic Four. Recoil, Reaper, Buckshot, and... Bazooka Obsessed. Cut Bazooka. it out! Bazooka. And I'm about to give them the five-star review. My five-star rating system rates figures in five categories. Presentation, quality, posability, playability slash collectability, and value. Each category is worth zero to one star for a final possible value of five stars. Let's see how the Craptastic Four fares. First up is presentation. The core figures, oh I'm sorry, the core elite figures come in some pretty standard action figure packaging. There's always some cool artwork on the back, so let's take a look at these <clears throat> new packs. Let's meet the new members of the curse. Pretty cool, right? Three new baddies to stir for the core. But turn that box back around, and sure, there's three figures in there, but only one is from the new line. On the next box, we can meet the new members of the core. And there they are, three new paragons of justice and virtue to fight evil and corruption and other such Let's turn that box around and mother and so where are these other figures, you ask? Well, there's two other packs that have got three more reruns nobody asked for. There are six new figures. Leonard could have just kicked out two new three packs, or at least added reruns of Puma, Snakebite, Plague, or other good figures. And look at this, the new arrival sticker is on the front of every box. And speaking of the front, let's take a look at the blatant lies that grace the top right corner. 18 points of articulation, huh? Do you mean on all three figures in the box combined? Let's take a look at this pack and see if our fearless leader, Rucker, can live up to the claim. on behalf of Lenard and the core elite. So we only got to 17. What a crock! 
Now, before I start getting threats from core fanboys, I know what they meant, but come on! They tell us there's 18 points of articulation and then pack in the four figures with the least articulation in the history of the line. What the actual f***? Presentation loses points for lying and gets a quarter star. Next up is quality. Normally I give the core a pass in this category considering the price of the figures, but since it's the craptastic four, there'll be no such mercy today. Let's take a look at these four. The plastic is solid and not cheap, the sculpts are pretty okay too, and the paint jobs are good, until you turn the figure around and see that it's all been half-assed. Come on guys, how's about we paint the rest of the figure so they look good once we get them out of the box too. So for half a paint job, quality gets half a star. Posability is next. Remember the 18 points of articulation and how I joked that maybe if you combined all three figures in the pack together, you'd get to 18? Well, you can add up every point of articulation on the Craptastic Four, and it doesn't even come close. Quarter Star! Next is playability. And the most playable out of the four would be the worst looking one of the bunch. Buckshot! He's got the same articulation of the Star Wars figures from over 40 years ago. How far we've come. One playable figure out of four gets another quarter star. Finally, we come to value. And I've got to admit, for the accessories and for the price you pay, these figures are just okay. And that's the real problem here. These mediocre figures get a mediocre half star for value. And so add it all up, and the Craptastic Four get one and three quarter stars altogether. With no real G.I. Joe line out there to speak of, and no other real competition, Lenard is in a very advantageous position. A position they refuse to exploit with these bull reissue multi-packs. The Craptastic Four should have been done away with by now, but they refuse to die. The new figures are great, but it's hard to think of this line as moving forward when they continue to put their worst figures front and center. Here's hoping that the next line will offer more than just 50% new content. Well, that's the core! Let us know what you think of these figures down in the comments below! Hey, where'd that crying kid go? Kid? The guy's practically a senior citizen. I guess he left, but I'm sure he'll keep popping up every time Lenard gets mentioned. Well, remind me not to mention Lenard. Will do. Anyway, that's it for this week. Raz Holly, hit the music! <laughs>